Right, tracky two fifths. These are sort of the ancient sort of cuttlefish, we think. There's still, still some debate whether they're squid or whether they're octopus. And I think they come to the conclusion during the, the mineralization of these things that they're probably um, squid cuttlefish. So what we've got here is this, this specimen down here is, is the same specimen that Richard Owen in the 1800s described as cockatoothus latin penis. They changed the name as they always do. But what it reveals is actually the pen, the gladius of the, the cuttlefish. So that's the body. The head would be just in front with the tentacles. We never ever find those. Even in Solonoff when we get exceptional preservation, there's, I think there's only three specimens that show evidence of tentacles. So it's extremely rare to find that. But what we've got is just what we call the gladius, and that orangey material is actually the thin material. And if you look closely, there's a bulge centrally down through the, the gladius there, which if you peel that shell back, reveals the ink sac. And you can still crush that melanin, that black pigment in that ink is still present, it's about 70% preserved. So you could crush it up and actually write with it. It's um, with a sort of liquid. But anyhow, that was, so it's well known, well documented, but when I collected these things, and bearing in mind there's, I think there's only four specimens in the Natural History Museum, and I think I've got up to about 90 now. So we've got a, a great deal of evidence to sort of, um, to um, cover this sort of thin material that we've got here, because this one reveals a different feature of this one. You've got a set of posterior fins, okay? And when you look closely, you'll see there's a division and in front there's another set of fins with another sort of division there. So if you look, then there's a set of fins that run parallel along the sort of gladius there. So that indicates one, two, three pairs of fins. And that's unknown in the fossil record and the living record. Now, no one's actually given us an answer to this because there's a chap called, he's been working all his life <coughs> on fossil squid, Desmond Donovan, professor. I think it's about 80 odd now. And he, when he came here, he sort of threw his hands up and said, Steve, I've never seen this feature before. I'm too old to work on this. It's, it's, you should give it to a younger person because there's a lot of work to be done on this. And anyhow, my sort of question was, is that a different species to that? Which, when you look at that, you probably think, yeah, because it's got a set of fins that that hasn't got. So, as you're probably well aware, squid, soft body, they've got no sort of skeleton as such. So, to get those fins preserved and that soft tissue is exceptionally, you know, exceptional preservation, which we get in this anoxic sea floor where these things probably get in under the mud, get encapsulated under there, lack of oxygen, so you get that soft part preservation. But this one here actually is preserved, not crushed flat like these, it's actually preserved 3D. Now, you've got to look both sides to see the symmetry, which is identical. And that gives an answer to these pairs of fins. Because if you look at the bottom of that and look at side view, you'll see the fins are down turned at 90 degrees to the body. And if you actually open those out, they would make those triangular set of fins. So what we're getting more often than not is a preservational feature. So when this animal dies and goes down in the muddy substrate, often those fins tuck in underneath and you don't see them. All right? Now the other thing, of course, is that's preserved 3D. So what it represents is actually the body outline of the squid. Now, we've section one, I've section one there, polished it, and you can see the internal organs all in the middle of that sort of lump. So that indicates it's not even crushed flat. So we've got exceptional preservation where the whole body is actually preserved really, really quickly. Now, the only way that can happen is to get fully encapsulated in an oxygen-free environment. And then a sort of chain of events comes about where the body, the organics of it, is a catalyst and draws in minerals very, very quickly. One of the minerals it draws in that's actually replaced some of its body tissues is a thing called iron pyrites, which can be precipitated in laboratory conditions in very, very quickly, they think. So that's, it's there, there's the evidence. You can't dispute that. But it's exceptional preservation. We call it like the Medusa effect, where you get that exceptional preservation. Now, these, of all these 3D ones, I've always fallen out of the cliff and I've never ever found the level which they occur at, and I have now. There's one there that's semi 3D, it's come from that level where these come from. It's only at one particular horizon. Now, years gone by, and I never realised that horizon yielded this sort of material. It did used to yield sometimes 
Ammonites Preserve 3D. Now, if we're getting soft part preservation in the squid, there's no reason to suppose we wouldn't get it in the ammonites as well. So, and as anyone knows, soft part preservation in ammonites is extremely rare. So that's something to be looked for in the future.